Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black mid-range deck featuring a ton of cards from Streets of New Capenna that care about having 5 or more mana values among cards in our graveyard. One of those is Sanguine Spy, a 3 mana 2-3 with Menace and Lifelink, can sacrifice other creatures to surveil, although won't be using that very often. Instead, at the beginning of our end step, if there are 5 or more mana values among cards in our graveyard, we may pay 2 life and if we do, draw a card, so it can turn into a very nice card draw engine and the Lifelink sort of offsets the life loss. We also have Snooping Newsy, which can potentially gain life, a 2-2 that mills two cards when it enters to enable our synergies, and if we have those five or more mana values, it gets plus one plus one and lifelink. And then Avon Heartstabber, another 2-drop, a 1-1 one, one with Flying. When it dies, we mill 2 cards and draw a card, so it replaces itself and enables our synergies. And with 5 or more mana values, it gets plus 2, plus 2 and Death Touch, so it turns into a nice threat as well. And then at 6 mana, we've got 2 copies of All Seeing Arbiter. Doesn't care about having 5 mana values exactly, but just gets better the more mana values we have, as it can shrink opposing creatures down, gets to draw 2 and discard whenever it enters or attacks, so it can stabilize the board nicely and still provide card advantage. And that's also the reason why we have some of these random cards, like Seagate Restoration in our deck, just as a 7 mana land that we can maybe mill or discard to enable our various synergies. And then looking through the rest of our deck, we were kind of your typical mid-range deck with some efficient removal spells to keep up against aggro with four copies of Blood Chief's Thirst can also be kicked. We've got Fading Hope as a bounce spell and that's two mana a few copies of Power Word Kill as more spot removal. We've got Consider which can also potentially put more mana values in our graveyard. And then at 3 mana besides Sanguine Spy, 2 copies of Graveyard Trespasser, which can also maybe gain a bit of life, just a good mid-range creature. And 2 copies of Kaito, which can provide more card advantage. And even if we don't have an attacking creature to enable it, we can still discard cards to maybe get those 5 mana values in Graveyard. Also plays well with the All-Seeing Arbiter, which can shrink opposing creatures down if we discard to Kaito. Doesn't really matter which card is doing the discarding. At 4 mana, another Planeswalker, which can draw extra cards with Sorin, can also make 2-3 flying lifelinking vampire tokens. And then Hagra Mauling, we can play as a land or a removal spell, so similar to the Seagate Restoration, although Mauling we end up playing as a spell more often. And then the only 5-drop is Leer, which we're happy to mill to potentially enable our synergies, but if we can actually get it in play, it's also very powerful with all these mill effects filling our graveyard, and then access to a ton of cheap removal, especially Fading Hope, to maybe bounce Leer back to our hand if the opponent tries to kill it, and completely take over the game. And then our mana base includes a few creature lands with Hall of the Storm Giants and four copies of Hive, and then our typical channel lands with Soaring City and Abandoned Mire, couple basics, and then some more dual lands to round out our mana base. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, our hand's missing some 2 and 3 drops, but we do have a consider, so I'll try it out. And then... Can maybe discard one restoration to the Arbiter once we get to it. Facing black or green. So let's see if we can find an early play. Another mauling we can definitely put in the graveyard. And Leer, not a bad pickup. And there's a heart stabber. Alright. For now, Hagar mauling still costing three mana as our opponent doesn't have any basics. And our late game is looking good. With her Bloom Command, killing Heartstabber still draws us a card. Opponent maybe just desperate to hit her land drop. Okay, so we can play a tapped hive or we can keep up Hagra mauling. Although I don't expect too many 4 drops from my opponent. Maybe they've got a 3 drop they weren't able to play last turn, like a Stomper. As this does look kind of like a mid range ramp deck. So I could see the advantage of still keeping up Hagra Mauling. It's going to be a fight rigging instead. Okay. So now we have to ask ourselves the question, do we keep up Mauling with 4 mana or 3 mana to potentially kill their Shakedown Heavy? And uh, we do have some 5 and 6 drops we would like to cast. I think I got to play a tap land here and pass with... Hagar Mauling available since we cannot really afford for the opponent to combo with fight rigging. 
So that's where having some cheaper interaction would come in handy. Ooh, Cemetery Tampering as well. So they've got both hideaway cards. This one's gonna take a while to trigger as they need 20 or more cards in Graveyard. But that does mean we don't have infinite time here. And for now, I guess just play a tapped restoration and pass. And then maybe next turn I'll play Arbiter, but that does expose us to fight rigging. Shake don't have in the graveyard. And another fight rigging, okay. Well, that's maybe even more incentive to keep up Hagra mauling. Don't have any one mana bound spells, so we could go leader plus maybe keep up Fading Hope. So we're in a bit of a tough spot. I think I still need to keep up my interaction. Opponent set six cards in graveyard. And then we can consider and maybe pick up something useful. I guess we can main phase it. Blood Chief's Thirst, not an instance. So I don't think that's good enough. And then... Don't know if it's worth it to hang on to Seagate Restoration. Probably fine to do so. And then pass with Hagra mauling up. And then next turn I can finally play a Sanguine Spy. Although possible our opponent just doesn't have any creatures. Kaito might be better, as that helps us maybe discard Restoration to get closer to 5 mana values. And we'll still keep up Hagra mauling as well. Opponent with a Soul Shatter in response. That's fine. I think we still discard Restoration. And then pass. And then next turn we can uh, maybe play Spy and draw right away. Opponent's also playing with Egon as another way to enable fight rigging. That makes sense. Good combo with uh, Cemetery Tampering. It's going to be Rebirth bringing back their Titan. In response to the trigger, we'll have to Mauling, otherwise the shield counter is going to be an issue. But they can still put two counters on the remaining Rhino. So I really want to find a bounce spell. Otherwise, fight rigging will trigger next turn. Okay, so I guess our best bet is Arbiter, which gets to see two cards. Or we can play a Leer, replay a Consider out of the graveyard. And that can maybe draw into a Bounce spell. But Arbiter, I guess, also just shrinks down the Rhino, so it doesn't uh, enable Fight Rigging, so that seems better. And then a land can go. And we can still play Heart Stabber. Now it's a 3 3 Death Touch. Okay, so we're shields down. If our opponent has another large creature, we're in trouble. And they're close to flashing back Rebirth, which can bring back Titan. So 2-8 Rhino. Now we do also have Hive, which can maybe exile cards from the opponent's graveyard, so we can go after the Rebirth opponent with 17 cards in graveyard, so... Close to enabling the tampering. But it looks like they have another reanimation spell. Rebirth bringing back Titan. Yeah, that's a problem. Another Arbiter is not bad, however. I guess we'll play that. And then... At this point, a Nuzi might be able to go... And then shrink down both Titan and the Rhino. Can attack with Arbiter and Heartstabber. Did not find the interaction we were hoping for. So... I guess a lane can go now. 
Keep shrinking down the opponent's creatures. And then we can add a Sanguine Spy to the board to draw. Alright, there's a Power Ward kill. Although, still need to worry about those shield counters. Our opponent can enable Cemetery Tampering, which found an Egon. 6-6 six, six Death Touch. So it doesn't look like they have any other top ends besides the Titan of Industry. So if we can keep up with those, we might be okay. And yeah, Double Arbiter in play is doing a pretty good job. Also now Egon enables all the fight rigging, so they'll get to cast three spells for free. And that's one Titan already. Although maybe they kind of missequenced the fight rigging triggers. Otherwise they might have been able to play the other spells for free too. Fading Hope's not bad. Second Fading Hope, Leer Fading Hope again. I guess I'll start with Fading Hope. We can attack, see what we draw, and see how much mana we're working with here. I guess we still have enough to also Power Word kill, which can take care of Egon. So sure, play Leer. Might have wanted to actually Fading Hope first, in case they remove Leer here in response. And then, yeah, we'll clear the Author Titan. Attack with our flyers. And there's another Fading Hope, perfect. Discarding Nuzi. And another Fading Hope, although I'm short on blue mana. So slightly regretting discarding that land now. Uh, let's see what we get rid of. Maybe a Sanguine Spy. So the opponent's creatures are very small. And maybe it's fine to just keep up removal as opposed to doing it main phase here. Opponent's at four. And yeah, we've got Blood Chief's Thirst available as well. So we can maybe kill the Rhino token. And then still have Fading Hope. Okay, pass, we can draw. 24 cards remaining. And there's a land we could have used. So, now fight rigging. Needs another large creature to enable it. So hopefully we can dodge a sweeper. Although I haven't really seen any in their graveyard so far. It's gonna be Titan hard casts, that's fine. So, can bounce it before fight rigging gets enabled here. Bounce it back, and then they should be dead to our flyers. Alright, interesting game here. Had to keep up that hangar mauling for a long time just to play it safe, but then eventually all seeing Arbiter was kind of the all-star. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems acceptable. Probably okay to play a tapped restoration, or we can keep it to discard to Kaito, and that way I uh, maybe get an extra mana value in Graveyard, which is always helpful. And we played a tapped Marsh, so we could maybe play turn two, Nuzi, or the other two drops, so that worked out. Hopefully I pick up a different land so I can play Kaito. Although Thalia's can make that difficult. Okay, in that case probably just play Tapped Restoration. And uh, play Heartstabber. Up against Mono White Aggro. Can be a tough matchup so we'll need some cheap interaction here. Fading Hope being one of them. Spellbinder gets to take a look. Probably goes after Arbiter. So it's going to be 8 mana, which is probably too expensive to realistically cast. Goes for a Kaito instead. 
could imply that they have another Spellbinder they can play. For now, Heartstabber holds off Spellbinder, and I think we'll just hang on to our two instants. So we'll pass. It's gonna be an Aspirant. Probably putting counter on Spellbinder. Times two, that's rough. Do I want to bounce an Aspirant, or do we end up bouncing Spellbinder if they pump it? We'll probably put a counter on Thalia one on Spellbinder. Yeah, this is pretty tough. I guess we can consider first, see what we pick up. Restoration definitely going Graveyard. And a Hagra Mauling at 5 mana is kind of pricey. Okay, maybe we just let the Aspirant triggers happen, bounce Thalia, and then next turn we can Mauling. So one each, as expected. And uh, let's Fading Hope Thalia. And a Blood Chief's Thirst is pretty good. Take four. I think I'm still in favor of Hagra Mauling here, since that would also enable Heart Stabber. So it can gain Death Touch and maybe trade off. Would pump the Newsy as well. So, can maybe set up a nice ambush. Although they play Thalia first, that's not necessarily gonna work. Alright, so now they kind of force the issue. And uh, I guess killing Aspirant long term might be better, although we can kill those with Thirst more easily. So, tough call. Might end up just Thirsting Thalia. So we can play Kaito in a reasonable time frame. So in that case... Yeah, I don't know if it really matters. I guess we'll go after an Aspirant still. Hoping Heart's Tiber can trade for Spellbinder. Alright, Aspirant number three. Opponent's not messing around. Don't really have any sweepers we could draw into. This would be useful. But at least we're holding off any potential attacks for the time being. And a Sanguine Spy is a great draw. I think we still just play Spy over killing anything with Blood Chief's Thirsts. That way we get to draw end of turn, get closer to Arbiter. Opponent moving to combats. Thalia gets to attack. And if Spellbinder attacks, it might imply Wandering Emperor, which they can now play for 5 mana, paying the Thalia tax. I think we still make them use it. I can block with Heartstabber and then sack it to Sanguine Spy. And then they'll have played their Wandering Emperor, so they don't get to exile any tapped creatures. And then we can kill the Wandering Emperor as well. Thanks to our Menace creature. Fading Hope's not bad, and I'll keep a land on top. Show them how we greet our enemies. Although I guess never mind, Wandering Emperor at 4 loyalty means they could chump to keep it alive. So... I would have to use both removal spells on Aspirants, which is probably not worth it. If I thirst Thalia, we can play another Sanguine Spy, attack Emperor, and then we would gain 5 in the process, which is still reasonable. And we'll see how they block. Their opponent does jump. And we'll just play another Spy. And then, do we want to draw at the cost of 4 life? It would be a 10. They can animate one of their creature lands. 10 life might be a little sketch. Although if they animate a creature land, yeah, I guess they can still activate Emperor to give an extra plus 1 counter. So I think we can only activate this once. Stay at 12. Otherwise, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to chump with Sanguine Spy, which doesn't seem great. Conan does minus Emperor. So 
So that's a trade, that's okay. And Apparition exiles the other one. Nope, goes for Newsy. Alright. Well, now with double Fading Hope, we have quite a bit of interaction. So... I guess we can consider first, and then... See what we draw. Would like to hit my land drops. Hagra mauling. I guess we can play tapped. Although, problem here is bouncing spellbinder lets them replay it to take away Arbiter, which is kind of annoying. Might be able to catch them off guard if they go for an all-out attack, but they would probably just send a spellbinder. I guess they could send a 3-3 apparition after pumping it with aspirants. If we keep Sanguine Spy back. Could also attack. So we do have some options. I think just playing Mauling tapped is fine. And then we'll probably just pass. And then do I want to fall to three? I have two bound spells. Can generate an extra blocker by bouncing apparition. Yeah, you know what? I think we can afford to. Might also incentivize them to attack with a team, and then double fading hopes can be extra punishing. So our opponent animates Crawling Barons, means they won't be able to replay Spellbinder, so we can play Arbiter next turn. Right, just sending the larger creatures, so I could bounce Apparition double block Crawling Barons and bounce Spellbinder, or we can just bounce both. I think going for the double block is acceptable here. And then don't need lands anymore. And Kaito we don't need. Alright, double block. Trade Spy for Barons. But now we get to play Arbiter. And the board should be quite stable. Although could use more sources of life gain. And there's a Newsy, perfect. So start with Arbiter. Can still get access to both colors. And then probably not gonna cast Restoration this game, is my guess. So we'll uh, discard that, play a tapped Hive. And then probably fine to attack since we're not in any danger of Cave getting activated. Do have to watch out for another Wandering Emperor exiling a tapped Arbiter. So we'll have to see if that's worth it to attack. Opponent can of course exile the UC with the Apparition as well. So the game's not over yet. Opponent has a lot of cards in hand, Power Ward Kill, a nice pickup. Okay, so... I'm guessing attack, shrink down Spellbinder, keep our illusion back, and then see what we draw before deciding what to do next. Thirst, another nice draw. So I can play Newsy, play Thirst on Aspirants, perhaps. Alternatively, could get Kaito out there, and then Thirst still have Power Ward Kill available. Although the Apparition can also exile Kaito, so maybe having them go after Newsy instead is fine, although I'm kind of expecting another Wandering Emperor exiling Arbiter first, so then having the Newsy to apply more pressure seems nice. And do I play out my lands? I think I do, since Kaito at 5 mana is quite pricey, still have our creature land we can activate. Yep, there's Emperor main phase, Exiles Arbiter. But should be able to pressure the Emperor nicely. That's coming off. You are not much of a roadblock. 
Opponent passes, kill Spellbinder. Soaring City we can hang on to as a bounce spell. So let's see, both attack Emperor, then our opponent just lets her go. Alternatively, could offer the opponent to chump with Initiate. Alternatively, we can just attack with one creature, let them chump if they want to save Emperor. Not sure if that's quite worth it. And then Kaito probably starts drawing as opposed to animating Hive. So sure, let's attack with both. Gain three. Apparition can exile Kaito, but hopefully we get a bit of momentum from the card we draw here. Would love to find our second Arbiter. I'm never done for good. Another Sanguine Spy to draw. There are many secrets I don't know. Consider we can cast. We and there's a Sanguine Spy, okay. So... Yeah, probably fine to play it here. Go to six, draw. And then Apparition might go after Sanguine Spy. As Kaito phased out, so they can't quite exile that one just yet. But yeah, now our opponent's stuck on four mana. After we killed their creature land, unable to really get back into the game. Get that momentum going. Heartstabber is not bad either. So I could attack with Spy, but then it would trade. So probably just sending the Illusion plus maybe Hive. Keep Spy back, can draw. And don't know if this really matters. Probably want to keep creatures in their graveyard in case we draw Trespasser. Opponent could double block, they don't. Kaito draws. Play Heartstabber. Another tapped Hive. And do we go to four? What's the worst case scenario? Opponent has like two cheap removal spells, attacks, trains and we die. Seems unlikely, would have to be like Portable Hole plus another Apparition or Fateful Absence times two. It's not impossible, I think we take the risk. Bone moves to combats. Thanks with both, so it might be another Wandering Emperor. In which case, I can set up two profitable blocks and then only one of them will turn sour. Okay, so yeah, they had a, a lot of the Wandering Emperor in hand, which is kind of why they struggle to get on the board quickly. So Sanguine Spy only sacrifices other creatures, so... Won't be gaining any life in this exchange, sadly. But Sorin can make a life-linking vampire, can take out Emperor if we'd like. Do have to watch out for Cave now. So that's potentially three damage in the air. Could turn into four if there's an Emperor still in play, but should be able to take care of that. Do we animate Hive is the question. I think we attack first. Draw with Kaito, see what we pick up, and then kind of reevaluate based on that. Hope to find some instant speed removal. Trespasser is great too. Alright, so that can gain a bit of life. Get rid of a creature. And sort of make a vampire at this point. Okay. Kaito getting close to an ultimate as well. Don't think it's going to get to that point. Alright, so opponent can animate cave. Goes for a protector shield instead. Okay. This apparition has a reasonable attack, but they're going to keep it back on defense. And... Uh, 
can attack with our flyers. Unless we want to keep Heartstabber back to block cave. Don't think that's a huge concern. And then uh, could also animate Hive as an extra attacker. What if I animate both and attack with the team? They have one blocker. This would make the opponent lose one extra life. So let's see, it's one plus another six, seven, eight, nine. I don't think we quite get there. So we'll just attack with our flyers. Draw with Kaito, and then Soren were happy to cash in for a couple vampires. Fight for me now. Poon plays a land. Spellbinder is gonna see a land. And a second spellbinder as well. And there's an arbiter to kind of see the end of the game. Uh, that seems fine to play, or we could animate double hive. Kind of want to ultimate Kaito before opponent concedes. And then, uh, sure. I guess we could animate double hive and pretty sure they're just dead. If we attack with a team. Trespasser gets a creature. Hive gets a no creature. Protector Shield does save them quite a bit of life, but not quite enough to survive. Awesome, so close game here against Mono White. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and seems keepable. Lots of cheap removal, and at least two lands to start out. So I think I'll take three so we can consider, make sure we keep hitting our land drops, facing a Grixis deck. All right, never mind, four color, briefcase. So maybe a Kami War deck. Keep a hive even though it'll come into play tapped. Play Heart Stabber. Yeah, for points of five color Kami War deck, it does not bode well. As they can probably go over the top of our mid-range deck. Do I want to trade Heart Stabber? Yeah, probably. Just to draw a card and mill. So we can maybe enable Sanguine Spy. Okay, let's play Kaito, which can start looting. A Leer seems worth keeping, even though it is our one 5 mana card. So it could be useful in enabling Sanguine Spy. We've got 0, 1, 2. Discarding another Kaito would also help. So maybe we'll start there. And then maybe next turn. I can uh, discard Leer, play Sanguine Spy, and draw right away. Opponent's got 5 mana, so they're getting close to that Kami War potentially. Step 1 might be to consider, although then I might be unable to play Sanguine Spy. Leer does seem kind of important as our late game play, so I don't necessarily want to discard it here. But I also don't want to play Sanguine Spy without getting immediate value. So maybe we'll just draw with Kaito first. And probably don't need another Thirst. Can consider. Best case scenario, Mill. 
or missing mana value and then draw an untapped land for spy. Although Soren's also kind of tough to turn down. But it would be the missing mana value. So if I graveyard that, draw an untapped land, spy becomes active. Sure. Alright, we got there. Now let's see if they can remove it at instant speed. Alright, looks like we get to draw. So we've got two card draw engines working in our favor, but um, yeah, still don't have a great plan if Kami War shows up. It's gonna be a binding to take care of Kaito first. Heartstabber, 3 3 Death Touch at least. So, can attack. Play Heartstabber, consider as well. Can maybe do that first. And another Sanguine Spy seems worth keeping. So, we'll play that plus a Tapped Hive instead. Or maybe a tapped hall. I guess it doesn't really matter. So I'll happily draw two. So we've got a lot of spot removal. But it's mostly for creatures. Not going to be able to deal with enchantments all that easily. Massacre for three wipes the board. There's another Sanguine Spy. Want to wait to play Leer until we have a Fading Hope we can cast to save our creature. So for now, I guess Heartstabber plus Sanguine Spy looks good. There's Fading Hope. So if they play another sweeper, we at least draw off heart stabber. But I imagine we'll see Kami War. Yep. Can exile the heart stabber so we don't draw, but then we do get to keep Sanguine Spy for an extra turn. And a trespasser. Okay. So do we want to play Leer? I don't think so. They can just bounce it with Kami War. So, we can go for Newsy plus Trespasser, keep up Fading Hope. Could exile my own creatures. I guess that was worth considering, although we might run out of certain mana values as well. And hit for two. Hope there's no second Meat Hook Massacre, but there's probably going to be another Kami War. So not looking forward to that. And then I can discard Bloodsheaf's Thirst. Although I guess when this transforms it is a dragon, so I wouldn't be able to kill it with Power Word Kill. Opponents just picking up their own uh, Meat Hook Massacre instead, I guess it works too. Don't know how useful Power Word Kill is in the matchup. So maybe discard that. And then we can bounce our probably Sanguine Spy back. And do I want to land? Sure. Okay, so I can play Leer and pass, and then a Fading Hope available at instant speed. Might be okay. And we can consider as well. Binding. 
goes after Lear, so we'll consider and then Fading Hope. And Bloodchief's Thirsts we already have. Could see instant speed removal and response, but we don't. So this turn we need to deal with the Manifest. And then probably find to add a Sanguine Spy to the board. Play this tapped. Although, yeah, there is a world where we cast it, but we still have lots of other ways to spend our mana between Leer and our creature lands. So we're keeping up with the card advantage, but that Kami War was quite devastating. So I don't know how many more of those we can take. It's gonna be Prismatic Bridge to start cheating creatures into play. And uh, yeah, we don't have any enchantment removal really. So gonna have to bounce all those creatures with Leer. I imagine they'll include Titan of Industry, maybe Coma. So for now, can hit for two. And then it's gonna be a ray to shrink it down. If I play Leer, I still have a bunch of Considers I can cast. Don't want to overextend into another Metog Massacre necessarily. So this seems like a good in-between. We'll go down to 6. And there's Titan. It's gonna make a Rhino and gain 5. So at least we can kill the Titan of Industry, as it doesn't have a shield counter. So I can use Power Word Kill. Still probably best to keep up a Fading Hope at all times in case they're holding more instant speed answers, but happy to kill Titan. Okay, so we can hit our land drop. Might want to hang on to at least one Fading Hope. I guess if I cast it on their token, they could kill Leer in response, which is bad. So I might have to double Thirst, although then Massacre drains us. I guess that's still fine. But this uh, steady stream of titans is going to be tough to beat. So we'll attack. Another ray to deny the life gain is annoying. Do I want to play another Sanguine Spine to a potential Meat Hook Massacre? Could potentially pay two life down to one to draw end of turn again. Although I have to kind of be aware of another Massacre, or opponent killing their own creature, potentially. There's also the Briefcase that could draw three at some point. So a lot of things to consider. And consider being one of them. Don't think I can play around another Metog Massacre at this point, so we'll play another Spy. Can play Heartstabber, still have Fading Hope and Consider available. And pass it back. So we'll go down to one. And there's another Titan. This time going for shield counter. Opponent happy with one card in hand. That's 
Not what we want to see. Chariot. Can make a heap of cat tokens. Okay, so start with a flashback. Consider. Abandon Mire. Probably not good enough. Although there's a way to get back Lear if they were to kill it. And then, don't think we necessarily get to keep up Fading Hope for the rest of the game. Opponent only has one card in hand after all. So, I think I'm fine to flashback consider. Heartstabber. Is that good enough? Kind of want to dig for another Fading Hope. So we can bounce all these creatures without killing them. Soaring City, another bounce effect, and All Sing Arbiter, not bad either. Okay. So I can bounce Titan, bounce a Rhino, attack with pretty much the team, maybe keep Leer back so they cannot block with Chariot or double block it. And then we'll see if we want to play an Arbiter as well. Agra Mauling can remove a shield counter, I suppose. We're going to have to deal with double Titan of Industry next turn, pretty much. Because of this Prismatic Bridge. Mauling, kind of a clunky answer. Once we take the shield counter into account. But I guess we do need interaction. I think we still want to dig for Fading Hope. Bounce Titan. Opponent can crew chariot in response. Do we want to bounce the chariot perhaps? Or just try and kill it, but I cannot kill it at one life, otherwise Massacre finishes us off. So maybe I'm just going for Arbiter Shrink Down Chariots. And there's another Fading Hope, that's nice. Probably don't have time for Restoration. Okay, so let's attack with all these. No point in attacking with Lear when they can block with Chariots. Put on double blocks, I could Fading Hope again, which may be worth it. And then I might have to play Soaring City to keep up Fading Hope from Graveyard. And then... Do I draw with Sanguine Spy down to 2 life? 14 cards remaining. I don't think I do. So, Prismatic Bridge finds Isika. I guess that's uh, also a creature they can hit, so... Dodge the bullet there. Reflection also a must answer with Titan of Industry. Goes for 5 life and a Rhino. And Chariot can attempt to crew and uh, copy the Rhino, but it is still smaller thanks to our Arbiter. So do I want a Fading Hope, the Rhino token? Yeah, since we can just kill the Titan now. And another Arbiter we can keep. So Chariot down. Okay, time to kill some creatures. Just have to be careful about this uh, Meat Hook Massacre still. But we can Mauling 
and power word kill or power word kill twice. So glad I didn't pay any life with this Sanguine Spice last turn. Attack. And can keep Leer back. Trespasser, more life gain as well. And... Uh, have to be a little careful with only 11 cards remaining, probably don't have time for Consider. Bone falls to 10. And do I feel the need to play another Arbiter here? Do you have to be mindful of another potential Massacre? I <laughs> wouldn't be replaying Seagate Restoration, although it is an option. So I think we hang on to some of our creatures, also have creature lands to potentially finish the job. Maybe playing Trespasser is still worth it, just for the drain. Sure. And exile that Titan. Okay, pass it back. Sanguine Spy triggers, don't think I'm interested in drawing. Prismatic Bridge finds another Titan. They can draw with Briefcase. But mostly hoping to dodge Massacre. Kami War could also be bad still. Hagram Mauling can deal with Titan. Which at this point can't afford to play shield counters anywhere. Alright, another Titan Heartcast. That happens. Goes for 5 life and a Rhino. And we can mauling one of them. Plus consider. Next turn, two more removal spells to clear a path. And we should be getting close to lethal. Aha, uh -huh, Voltage Surge. Finally taking out Leer. Yeah, that's a problem. I guess we consider on the way out. Probably don't need lands. Our opponent finally got rid of Leer, which was our MVP here. So can still play Kick Thirst to kill Titan. And then the Arbiters can shrink down the Rhinos as well. Probably won't be playing Newsy since I don't want to mill myself. Although Arbiter, let's see, is this a May ability? Yeah, it is not. So the Arbiters could also end up decking us. So might have to do it with Creature Lands instead. Titan definitely has to go. I think it's still worth it to play Arbiter here. And then we get to trigger both Arbiters. There's Fading Hope. So Newsy can go. Shrink down Rhino, shrink down Rhino, and then let's see if I bounce a Sika. It's not like we have lethal here. Attack with the team down to four cards. Trespasser exiles Titan. And, uh,. Yeah, this is going to be close. Opponent is all empty at least, so they're just top decking. Falls to 9. And we'll pass, so definitely not going to draw. Can attack with one more Arbiter, perhaps. 
and our opponent's out of creatures with Prismatic Bridge, so we finally did it. And our opponent explodes, wow, what a game. Had to fight through multiple Titans, all of them in fact. But uh, yeah, Arbiter eventually got it done thanks to a huge assist from Lear. So we got to play some incredibly long and interesting games with our blue-black mid-range deck. So overall, quite happy with how it turned out. Not necessarily a tier 1 deck when facing some of those red aggro decks especially. It can take a little bit too long to get those 5 mana values in Graveyard to enable cards like Newsy. So sometimes it does take a little bit too long to get those synergies online. But for the most part, if you're just looking for a fun mid-range deck, this seems like a nice place to be. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.